I've been mulling this over in my head back and forth throughout the last three or four minutes now. And I just don't think there's any way that I can do it. I just don't think there's any way that I can do this video without getting the shit demonetized out of me. So I'm going to demonetize myself. Fuck it. Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Yeah, you see, um, we have to self-assess our videos when we put them up. And then YouTube manually go through our assessment and say whether or not they agree. But there's just no way I can do this video without swearing like a French sailor that's just stubbed its nail on a nail. And... Uh, so when it comes to the option, you've got like option A. Is there like a little bit of swearing? Some F words here or there scattered throughout the video. If you tick that, it goes, that's fine. Or I'm actually going to tick option B, which is, is it like one of those black rapper songs where they keep dropping the N word? Yes. Yes. Today's video is going to kind of be a little bit like that. I am seething. You thought that they had already pissed all over Batman's legacy a couple of weeks ago. <gasps> Just wait to get a load of this week's episode. <laughs> but I'd like to start off a little bit cock-handed uh, by rating the show immediately, okay? So this week he gets a NAUGHT out of 10. Um, and I just, because it's the season finale, it's not the season finale, but it is. Uh, because they were meant to make two more episodes, but COVID happened, and they couldn't finish it, and then they paralysed one of their workers, because they don't give a shit about safety on the set, and it's the second person, including Ruby Rose, that's got themselves injured, because this is cheap tat, and the showrunners don't care, and the writers don't care, but I just want to give a special thank you to, to Caroline Dries, the showrunner, and when I say special thank you, I mean, go fuck yourself, <laughs> okay, uh, and uh, the, the writers, uh, I just want to say, um, you are possibly the, the worst pieces of shit I've ever had the misfortune to come across. And this show, I'm pretty sure, is the worst thing I've ever seen on television. So give yourselves a pat on the back for that. And by pat on the back, I mean fuck off. Uh, who else do I need to thank? Oh, yes, yes, yes. That pedo guy in the, uh, C in the CW. Uh, I'd just like to, uh, to tell you to go fuck yourself as well. Uh, your whole station, the CW, is, uh, in, in desperate need of something. Uh, because, uh, every single show is fucked. Uh, you have no viewers anymore. You've lost them all. Uh, because you stuck a, a, a seven-inch wooden dildo up your ass and said, hey, let's just go full uh, partisan left-wing crazy. And everyone, yeah, that's great. That'll get nobody in, but we can preach our message. Uh, there were so many messages in this week's episode. That's why it gets a naught. Uh, it gets a naught for being shit. It gets a naught for just being Batwoman. It gets a naught because Ruby Rose is the fucking worst thing I've ever seen on TV. Uh, it gets a naught because of the political ideology they stuck in. It gets a naught because of what they did to uh, to Batman slash Bruce Wayne, which I'll tell you about uh, later on, because that's the cliffhanger. Uh, and it gets a naught because go fuck you. Right, that's the opening monologue out of the way. Uh, let's get into the episode. Starts off with uh, snow. You can just see it here. Snow coming down in Gotham. And I'm like, okay, so what's the significance of snow? Are they bringing Mr. Freeze in? Because all the Arkham inmates last week got released. Uh, no, uh, it starts off with it snowing and then uh, nothing. Right, well done. That, that's good. Uh, so we've got a, some guy in a, an orange jumpsuit, an Arkham orange jumpsuit, which is, of course, uh, very unnoticeable when you're walking around a fucking massive city full of millions of people. Uh, nobody, you know, and he just walks into a, a subway and then cuts a the guy's head off. Uh, don't worry, he was white, so it doesn't matter. 
And then uh, our hero comes in, our hero being Do Grey Scott. I like this man. This man's the best guy in his show now. We'll get to that later. And he uh, he does a stupid thing. He's got a shotgun. He's like, oi, mate, stop cutting people's heads off. And uh, the guy's just like, oh, I don't really want to. I want to keep on cutting people's heads off. So instead of Do Grey Shot just shooting him in his fucking face like a fucking moron, he uh, decides to not and let the guy nearly cut him in half. Then a 12-year-old boy suddenly comes out of nowhere and says, look at me, I'm a 12-year-old boy built like a fucking wet piece of tissue paper. And she gets her ass kicked. Or they get their ass kicked. Or they, them. I don't fucking know anymore. Uh, then there's Gotham City. Welcome to Gotham. I don't know. Then we have the obnoxious uh, voiceover of uh, Vespa Fairchild. Uh, she's no one can go fuck herself. She's played by that go fuck yourself uh, presenter. Go fuck off. Fuck off. Fuck off. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Uh, Mouse is a tosser. He can fuck off. Alice tries this episode, but I'm sorry, Alice. Your story was so pathetic and predictable. Even though I totally would, uh, you can fuck off. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't care to tell you what's going on. Um, Hush comes around the corner and says, my face is shit. So she says, I'll get you another face then. Uh, Mary can fuck off. Um, you fuck off. And the talk of the talk. By the way, I'm not just being purposely obnoxious here. That Nothing's happening. Nothing is happening. This conversation that's going on here, right? I and mean, I'm literally just explaining everything as it happens. This whole long scene of nothing was just, I don't like my face. Right, I'm going to go out and get another one. That's it. Literally, that was it. But it went on for five minutes for some reason. This scene here between Mary and 12-year-old and boy, um, she's like, huh, oh, um, I need somebody to give some exposition because the writers are really fucking lazy and shit at their job. So instead of actually showing things off or presenting things in a clever manner by setting them up, we're just going to have an exposition dump. Phone, shut up before I hit you. So Mary's just like, so the person that cut the person's head off, do you know who they were? And she's like, no, exposition, please. He was a part of the Gotham Giants or whatever they were, football team. And he was doing great. And then, wait for it, uh, one week he got angry with a referee and ripped his skull and spine out of his body. And she says, you know what I'm thinking. And then 12-year-old boy goes, yeah, cheerleaders. Because I don't know if you're aware of this, but Kate's gay! Quote, super gay. And that, that's, that's what that was. Fucking off. So, uh, oh, God. Alice goes to somewhere to do a boring scene about trying to get hold of kryptonite because kryptonite's the only thing that can penetrate the bat woman suit. Sure isn't going to be a penis, darling. We're all aware of that. Oh, Jesus Christ. And then he says, oh, it's kryptonite. And then she says, great, and kills him with a rock. Luke is actually trying to find a way to destroy Bruce's kryptonite. Because Bruce has got some kryptonite in the Batcave. And uh, he can't do it. And then Mary's just like, I'm a fucking twat. No, that is the that is the whole point of this scene. I can't destroy the kryptonite and I've used all three acids. And then Mary's like, have you tried crushing it? And he's like, what, with a hammer? Oh, my God. Oh, God, this scene is hilariously bad. There is a... the Right, by the way, this week's Batwoman is sponsored by shit music. Every, every fucking scene, there's some shit fucking music playing. By some goddamn millennial twat. And this guy's just like, I'm training. And then Batwoman's in the in the shadows going, I'm a 12-year-old boy. 
And he's just like, do you know where your brother is? Are you helping your brother cut people's heads off? And he's like, no. I testified against him in court. He probably really hates me. And then he suddenly just miraculously appears because the plot has to happen. And Batwoman was like, run away. I'll save you. Spoiler alert. She doesn't. And he ends up paralyzed for life because she's shit. And then, and then a couple of scenes later, Mary, fucking Mary, is talking to Do Grey Scott saying, Batwoman does things selflessly. She brings hope to the masses. She saves everybody without want of reward. Well, apart from the guy who she left to get fucking paralyzed for life. Oh, yeah. And all the other people that have died because she kept letting Alice go and Mouse go and everyone fucking go. So they fight and he throws her around. And then Do Grey Scott goes on camera and says, yes, I will be auditioning for American Idol next season. I don't know why he did that, but it's a bit weird. Um, Kate separates her shoulder and breaks a couple of ribs. But yeah, she'll be right. She'll be fine. She'll be fine. So they do some investigation and we find out that our villain is ba 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 CTE cuz NFL bad yo cuz masculine sports bad you should take up crocheting or scissoring vaginas together like all the good women on this show. Oh, Mouse is still wearing his fucking top from Stranger Things. For some reason. And then he's just like, uh, Mary, uh, he's just like, Alice, fuck you, you crazy cunt. Uh, I want to leave Gotham. Everyone's looking for us. Come on, if you won't go, I'm off, I'm off to go myself. And Alice says, do you mind just holding on for a few minutes longer so I can get some stuff to kill you with? Because it's so obvious that's what I'm going to do. And Mouse is like, of course I'll let, I'll just stay here and wait for you to find the necessary things that you need to kill me. She's like, cheers, Pat. Oh, Christ. CTE, bad. NFL, bad. Toxic masculine sports, bad. Soy! You won't catch me playing anything masculine. I haven't even played with my balls all season. Fuck off. Um, Mary says, oh, we need the help of the crows to take this guy down because he's got CTE. Batwoman's had a fucking rocket launcher shot at her, smashed through a three-story wall, and fallen to the ground and been fine. But come against an angry black man with CTE, and every fucking white woman's scared. There is a, a very angry black man on the loose, and... Uh, if you're a white woman, you better be fucking prepared because he's going to rape the shit out of you. Probably. Because we're really, really scared of black people. That's why we keep me making them soy-based entities. Because we virtue signal, but we're massively bigoted and racist, really. So Mary's like, we need the help of the crows. I've got a plan. My plan's to hopefully not get shot by this millions of millions of crows on top of the GCPD. What the actual fuck does the Gotham City Police Department do apart from nothing? <sighs> so Mary's like, I need to speak to my daddy. And that's when she gives her rant about, she does everything. She protects the city. She's amazing. She's great. She's super duper whooper. And she scissors like a trooper. And uh, <laughs> Do Grey Scott's just like, I can't speak to a woman who doesn't show herself. And then Batwoman grapples in. She's like, here I am. I can't show you my face, but I can extend my left hand because my right arm got, se my like, right shoulder got separated. So I'm, I'm going to pretend that I'm injured. 
even though nothing penetrates my suit. Again, especially not penis. And if you think I'm making a crass joke, folks, I'm not. That is actually what the writers are saying when they say nothing penetrates the bat suit. It means no men allowed. So uh, they uh, they get the coach, uh, who's clearly short sighted, and he's squinting into the camera. By the way, the 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 fucking reporter, this absolute Rampton, and you know it's not the actress's fault. You know, it's the writers, the writers who are fucking shit and have been from start to finish from episode one. Uh, she says, I'm going to interview the coach for the Gotham Knights, whatever the fuck they're called. And she says, coach, your thoughts. Your thoughts on what? What fucking colour underwear he's got on? Your thoughts about, mm, I don't know, the fucking works of Rudolf Kipling? Can you be a little bit more fucking specific, darling? Your thoughts. Are you a fucking WWE backstage reporter? Hello, Rock. You've just come from a match. Your thoughts. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. So he says, uh, yeah, a uh, mental CT man, because NFL bad. I'm going to wait for you in the middle of the of the middle of the stadium because this totally isn't a trap that we're setting up for you. And I want you to come and say hello to me so I can apologize for uh, faking your scan results. God, this show sucks. Mouse is like, is it time to kill me now? And Alice is like, yeah, and she kills him. And then she cries a lot. And it is, it is some good acting by Rachel. I would give you a point, Rachel, but uh, it's Batwoman, so fuck it. Then, with 12 minutes, 12 minutes of the episode left, 30 minutes have gone, Sophie and Julia turn up for the first time. Missing for fucking three-fifths of the episode or more. Four-sixths. I don't know, which is two-thirds, but... Don't know. Just, just, oh, hi, we're just making a, just coming in for the last couple of minutes, that's all right. Just fancy getting some pay, otherwise we'd be paid scale, don't really want that. So they come in, they're just like, where is everyone? And they're just like, oh, we set a trap for Batwoman. And uh, Judy's like, uh, Amer uh, she's like, warn her, phone her up and warn her. And so Julia does, but Batwoman doesn't listen. The guy cuts the power, then he cuts a load of crows in half. Nobody cares. By the way, I don't know how many crows got killed by this psycho here. Had to be at least three or four. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about people being killed. There is never any repercussions about anything. There's never any contemplation. Nothing. Nobody matters, nothing matters, nobody cares, because this show is written by twats who have no idea how to write, have no idea how to do characters, but they're great at lesbian puns, and, oh, we'll get to it. Oh, I don't want to spoil the fun for you. We'll get to it. Fuck my ass. So Batwoman's like, hey, hide behind me. Apart from this time, I've got two broken ribs and a separated shoulder. And this guy threw me around like tissue paper before. So he, he gets the better of Batwoman. Again. Oh my God, don't worry, he's black. He's not white, he's black. So that's fine. You can have a black man beat her. Just, when she's injured, he wouldn't, you know. And she's like, don't do this. Your, your brother who you threw a fucking machete into his spine. So he's paralyzed for the rest of his life. He said that before the CTE and the horrible masculine sport of the NFL's American football. You used to be really nice and kind and walk children to their homes or some shit to make sure it wasn't a pedo thing to make sure that they got home safe. And he's like, yeah, it's what it used to be like before I got all this bloody Benoit shit in my head. 
And then the crows all shoot him dead. And she's like, you don't didn't have to kill him. And they went, surprise, we're surrounding you. And now we're going to shoot you. So they all start shooting her. But of course, her bat suit's a bat suit. And so nothing happens because it's there's no consequences ever, never in this show. Nothing matters. And uh, she grapples away because nobody says, hey, do you know what? Maybe we should shoot her in a fucking 12-year-old face. You know this armor thing which keeps stopping our bullets? Maybe let's go for the fleshy fucking white shit. But no, they're all fucking retarded. So she zaps away, right? Oh, this is the beauty. This is the beauty. Fucking Oreo twins come running in. Fucking Oreo twins come running in. Julia and uh, and Sophie. Here they are. And uh, they're just like, hey, what are you doing, Jacob? Why are you shooting her? Don't you want to be on the right side? The right side of history, you bigot. Oh, fuck this show. And he's like, no, uh, I'm going to be the racist. And then he shouts at Sophie, and Sophie's just like, oh, fancy a scissor, because that's all this show's about. And then Julia tells her that Sophia, 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 so fuck off her, uh, is actually sending her photos, because she's spying on her, and she's saying, look, I'm going to fuck up your girlfriend. Mary's just like, should we do some cocaine, because she's a fucking airhead twat. 12-year-old boys pretending to drink alcohol, even though if she sniffs the thing, she'd be on her ass, fucking unconscious. Um, fucking Lucius, Luke, whatever. Soy boy comes... Look at that face. Soy boy comes in and says, hey, look, I've destroyed the kryptonite. And then fucking Tosspot here says, well, I've got more kryptonite because Supergirl gave it to me, but I don't want to destroy it because she said keep it. So that made the whole destroying the kryptonite thing fucking irrelevant and uh fuck off they can fuck off so jacob's like oh poopy whoopy i hate things we're gonna have to find bigger weapons to kill batwoman with and then oh fuck you fuck you caroline dries fuck you uh alice Makes a new face for Hush. And he gets up and he says, what have you done to me? And she says, I've given you your wish. And he's just like, oh, it's Bruce Wayne's face you've given me. I'm going to be Bruce Wayne next season. Fuck you. You've already fucking destroyed Hush. You've destroyed Batwoman. You've destroyed Batman. You've destroyed Julia Pennyworth. Let's just let's just tear everything down. Go fuck off. I'm done. I'm never watching this fucking show again. If you have laughed during this review whatever i don't even know what these things are called you better fucking hit that like button because i'm getting no money for this see <sighs> i'd plug teespring but it's it's i can't be bothered bye <laughs>